Hey peeps, Jess here, and today we are taking on the world's most expensive chocolate. <laughs> no, really. Well, I bought the cheap versions, but we'll get into that. Toad Chocolate was founded in 2013 by Jerry Toth and Carl Schweitzer with the mission of transforming the way that the world experiences chocolate, elevating its making and tasting onto the level of vintage wine and aged whiskey. And definitely they succeeded on the price point. I mean, I've never seen a chocolate bar go as high as $450. The most expensive bar I've bought before this to date from any maker was $20. And this is their cheapest at $25. So first, of course, we've got to answer the question, why are they so expensive? First, they are using heirloom national cacao for most of their cacao. That is all cacao coming from Ecuador. It's from a specific farm where they have old growth cacao trees from a fairly rare subspecies of cacao known as Arriba Nacional. It was designated heirloom by the Heirloom Cacao Preservation Fund, and it was a very popular cacao for quite some time in the 1900s until a blight happened and basically almost went extinct. On top of that, most of the bars are aged in very expensive spirits casks like Don Julio or La Frog. I know I'm mispronouncing that. And also normally not from this one, clearly, there is a box that they're put in a very special box made out of Spanish elm, and it has its own little special custom tool and its special little box. It's actually quite an experience. So these guys are from their signature line. It's the exact same chocolate you get from their $200 chocolate bars, just without the stuff that goes with it. And of course, then it's much cheaper. And also for journalistic integrity, this is a first impression because I've never been able to afford their chocolate before now. So we're actually gonna be tasting two from them. This is actually gonna be last. What I'm gonna be starting with is what is known as their mini bar harvest selection. And I'm starting here because this one has an 80% in it. and and this one's a 75, so I've got to start somewhere. <laughs> Just looking at it, this is a really lovely package. I love that they've actually worked with a local artist. So the work on the front here, which is quite lovely and you know, shiny, that's by Maria Dolores Salgado. So that's really cool. And also even have her Instagram here, so you can check her workout, which is super cool. And also you can see they have a lot of fair trade and origin stuff on the back, which is quite expensive to maintain. It's got a little belly band telling you more about the bars. And these are, this is all Ecuadorian cacao. This is going to be from their base chocolate line. Open as carefully as possible. Okay, so we have a tasting and pairing guide. Really cool. Telling us again that this is the Ecuadorian cacao and how they are working with farmers to try and keep the national cacao alive. Let's look at the tasting pairing guide first. So I like actually in here, they've got a little thing where you can put your own notes. You keep the box together and remember what you tasted because chocolate changes as you open it and work with it. And then you get just remembering, you know, taste the chocolate with all your senses. And also it's got a QR code on here in case you need more information, which is really nice. And on the back, they have their story. Very cool. More packing material. Oh, they're so cute and tiny. Let's try everybody. So we're gonna start with the 2015 dark because that is the 80.5%. I noticed in the descriptions when I was looking at their website that Toag does do a lot of fairly unique percentages, like a lot of 81s happen. And I'm wondering if that is because of what their machinery allows that they can go really fine on the percentages rather than doing more classics like 75 or 80. Let's open this little guy. They're really making sure you know that it's the rarest variety on earth and that it's two ingredient. So cacao beans and cane sugar. Getting this out delicately is tough. Okay, it's a little tiny piece of a bar. It's got the talk logo on it. I'm not gonna try and hold it to the camera because I will drop it. So let's, let's try it. Really fudgy, quite nicely fudgy actually. Cheers. That is probably one of the most mellow 80s I've ever had. It's very fudgy, fudgy, with earth undertones and the barest hint of astringency at the end. So it gets just a little bit of dryness. Normally 80s would be a lot more intense. But as it melts and lingers, there's more little bits of fruit notes going through. I'm not getting the floral notes, but I am getting the fudge and I am getting the earth. And that is a very pretty bar. Next, this is the El Nino, which is a 78%. And I'm really curious about this one because the notes mention mint. Mint is a really rare note to have in chocolate, period. And I'd like to see how it plays out. I wish these were a little bigger though. They're so tiny, so it's kind of scary to open them, especially on camera. And this isn't foil, it's some kind of a plasticky material. 
smells very neutral, so that probably explains why they chose it. A lot of the stuff we wrap chocolate in, from paper to cardboard to plastics, can impart scent, which is why it's recommended when you're tasting chocolate, if you're not sure about a smell, smell the packaging. And this smells really neutral. Yeah, like I'm not really smelling much. But that's a cute touch. Here we go, a nice and cute floral with a bit of a red fruit note. Oh, cheers. Okay, I'm not getting mint, but I mean, so the impression of mint, like there is this freshness to the bar that you don't really expect with chocolate. It starts really fresh and almost, I don't know what to say about that note. It's just, oh, consulting the deck. I can see thyme as well. There's kind of an herbaceous lightness to the front of the palette as you start. And then as it melts, you get like a little bit of vanilla, but really more of a fruit note, like a red berry. I'm not really getting raspberry, but fruit. Of the two, I like this one much better just because that front brightness is so fun. Like, I could totally see having that with a green tea. That sounds really nice. Last but not least from this set, we have the Rain Harvest 2017, which has orange bitters and black cherries in the description. We shall see. What can I say? I'm excited to try fun bars. You know, I cannot identify this smell. It's kind of musty, but there is definitely an edge to it that I don't associate with that generic musty smell that I'll get sometimes. I see a little bit of citrus. Well, cheers. So first, what was most interesting to me here is that this has the slowest melt of all three. It has the slowest melt and the most sugar. So you'd think that'd be creamier, sweeter. I know, it's going into this like definite bitter and slight cherry. And it's kind of got some, it's got more acidity to it too. I think where the bitters note is coming from. And then a pop of fudge at the very end, kind of the whisper of fudge. If you told me that was the 80%, I would have believed you because it eats far darker than any of the other two. I mean, that's the joy of chocolate though. You can have all sorts of stuff happening. Still that my favorite was the El Nino Harvest. That herbaceous thyme mint note is just really unique and fun. Last but not least of this tasting, we have the Galapagos Bar, which is a 75% and the only way to get chocolate from the Galapagos Islands, which is pretty cool. I, I bought it because it had a tortoise on it. The reason I'm really interested was when I was setting up to take photos, I realized it said it had no conch. So conching is the process of grinding down the cacao into chocolate liqueur, which can then become chocolate. And to say it has none, what is even going on here? What is this bar gonna do? We're, and we were discussing like maybe the fermentation is doing something funky, so the beans are soft, I don't know, but it does have a light roast and no conch, so I'm thinking this is gonna be a fairly delicate bar, which makes me feel bad that I did it last. But I was trying to follow the percentages. Also, it's shiny. Like, this is wonderfully distractingly shiny. And it was also illustrated by Maria Dolores Salgado. So very cool. Yes, they're saying it was sourced in two small farms in the Galapagos and the first chocolate from there, <laughs> as I drop everything. This is the same tasting thing, but should be slightly different. It's a bit more in depth about this specific bar, including recommendations of pairing with cognac. Oh, well, I should not have done this off camera. There's this really lovely, I wouldn't call it geometric, but various lines and 90 degree angle squiggles and just very satisfying to look at. And then we have the bar itself, which is going to be an adventure to get open. Oh my goodness. So if this is like the other bars, there should be a cacao bean in the center. I don't know how set in there. We'll find out, hey? More wrapping. We have the gold and then we have this little inner wrapper. Oh dear. I can I can see the cacao bean. Oh that's it's just so delicately put in here. I'm gonna go take some photos. Okay so while I was taking pictures I didn't find anything on whether or not to eat the cacao bean with it. It is completely encased in, in tusks still and going from a 75 to 100% as it were can be very intense, so I'll skip the bean on camera. That is very cool, I need to see the bean. Also, it's a fairly unique bean. So it's very small by what I think of cacao standards. Like not, I've seen bigger, I've seen smaller, but it's still on the very small side, very narrow. It's a little itty bitty bean. And honestly, it smells kind of sweet, which kind of, which makes sense. Fermented cacao can smell very sweet. Let's try some, eh? So it breaks off along the mold. It's a very delicate scent, I would say almost smoky. Cheers. Whoa. I, okay, 
So there's kind of two notes happening at the same time. And it's also quite astringent in the very, very end. So there's like this very intense initial smoke, but it's not super intense. It's not like takes over the palate. And if you're comparing to last week with Soul Cacao, it's much more subtle, but still very, very present. And then the background, there's a whole lot of cashew. Cashew and almost marshmallow. That is not the bar I was expecting. There's like cookies and winter spices and I'm like, cashew. I don't think it matches much of anything I've had. I've had cashew noted chocolate before, but there's like a creamy cashew at the very end and then also astringent. But yeah, it was like there was this creamy cashew and it was a bit drying at the same time somehow, if you'll believe that. Really cool. So now that I've tried four of their bars, my initial thoughts are these are really special occasion chocolate mainly because of the price point. I think these would be amazing bars for group get-togethers and tastings. Like, if you have a group of people who really know what spirits or pairings should happen with these bars, and then you all get together and try one bar together, I think that's really the best way to experience these, because it, it doesn't feel like I'm reaching the full potential of the bar sitting here talking to you on the camera. Like, off camera, I gave my spouse some of the El Nino, and she was all this taste like leafy vegetables, and that means I missed out on having that discussion, and that would've been way more fun. Am I gonna buy these regularly? No, I can't afford to. This was $65 for two bars of chocolate, and that's how much my normal chocolate order costs. So I think these will be like, you know, a rare treat. And those are my thoughts on talk. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Have you tried them before? Have you considered buying any of their bars before? Because they are way expensive when they get up there. And I wanna know who's actually bought the $450 bar. I'm really curious about that. And with that, I'll catch you next time. Later! Honestly, I feel like you discussed privilege and chocolate here at some point because these are quite a privilege to buy. And I don't know quite how to have that space yet. We'll get there.